Jessie from Jessie Shelf and today I have my January wrap up for you guys. Now I think January was a pretty damn good reading month for me. I read nine books and I have two readathons to thank to that. The Winter Buying a Bibliothon and Diversathon. If I didn't take part in those readathons, nine books would have not been read. This is my best reading month ever, I think, and I don't ever expect to read nine books in a month ever. Again, as for the books, there's a variety of ratings. I have a few two, a couple three, I think one four, and a few five. Um, I would prefer to read all five star reads in a month, but yeah, I guess that can't happen. Anyways, um, this year I've decided to do something a little bit different with my wrap ups. I'm going to be talking about the books in order that I rated them from lowest to highest. So we're going to start out with my least favorite and work my way up to my very favorite. Now the first book I'm going to be talking about also happened to be the first book I read of 2017 and I'm really unhappy that this is how I started the year, but that is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This was also my classic of the month. I gave this book two stars. I did not like Peter. He reminded me of a cult leader and I did not like the writing style in this book at all. I kind of liked Wendy. I just didn't get it, I guess. I don't know. And I'm really skeptical to read any more classics now. Like this was a real bummer for me. I was like, damn it, I'm not going to like any classics, but I'm determined to read one classic a month. And of course, classics range from all different kinds of dates. This one was written in like, oh, uh, when was this book? book first written. I don't know, but it was a long time ago and I'm not used to that style of writing, so I'm going to be seeking out more classics that aren't as old, I guess. All right, so the second book I have for you guys is Something in Between by Melissa De La Cruz. Um, this was a two-star read for me. I read it for the Winter Buying a Bibliothon. I read it as my 2016 challenge and my diverse book challenge. Now, in this book, we follow high school senior Jasmine, and Jasmine and her family are originally from the Philippines. They immigrated to the United States when she was quite young. So Jasmine is having an amazing senior year of high school, and she just got accepted for a scholarship to a college of her choice. So she goes home, tells her parents, and then her parents break the news that she can't accept the scholarship because her, the entire family are undocumented immigrants, and if she accepts it, they're probably all going to get deported. So the book just follows kind of the events after that. Um, I didn't like the writing style. I didn't like the whiny teenage shit. And I didn't like the insta love. This book is full of insta love and I can't stand insta love. I don't care what age the characters are. I don't like insta love because it's so unrealistic and it gives people a poor idea of what love really is. And you know what? I did like the um, stuff about the immigration and the diversity in this book. I think that was really important for the author to write about. I just feel like uh, this book was for a way younger audience than what I am. So if your age is like 8 to 12, you'll probably really like this book and it's an important book for you to read, but not for 23 year old me. I'm really sorry. And next up, I have Black Iris by Leah Rader. Now this book was a book I read for the Winter of Biennial Bibliothon and I read it as a book recommended to me by a booktuber. Now for this book, I'm just going to read you guys what I wrote about it on Goodreads because this is truly how I feel about this book. This book left me very torn. This was a weird experience for me. Um, so, so I'm giving Black Iris a three. This book is written extremely dark and the content is extremely dark. If books about sex and drug use make you uncomfortable, don't read this. I'm just warning you. Even though some of the content in this book was hard for me to read, I couldn't stop reading it. The writing style is lyrical, almost like a stream of consciousness from the very unreliable narrator. Not much else to say. I'm not 100% sure how to write a summary of this book, but I'm not 100% sure what I read but I just know I couldn't stop reading. So that's all I really have to say about Black Iris by Leah Rader. I just had a lot of different emotions while reading this book and there were times I had to put it down because it was so dark and it was actually kind of depressing me at times, so yeah. Another three star read of the month was Our Story Aboriginal Voices on Canada's Past and this is written by a bunch of different authors. I read this book for Diversathon. It was a book I wanted to read so I learned more about indigenous culture in Canada and about residential schools. So usually with these kinds of books, because it's a book of a bunch of little short stories, I rate each story out of five and then I tally it up. But for this one, I just gave it a solid three because that's how I feel about it. I liked it. It didn't blow 
my mind, if anything, this book is going to make me seek out more books written by indigenous authors. And now we are moving on to the higher star books of the month. So the first four star read for me was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Manscaledo. I read this book for the Winter Biennial Bibliothon and it was their group book. Um, in this book we follow Audrey and she is apprenticing with her uncle in forensics and this book is set in the Victorian time when Jack the Ripper was on his rampage. So Audrey gets mixed up with the case of Jack the Ripper and then she tries to find out who Jack the Ripper is. It's very gruesome, there are some very twisty turny things. I loved the writing style, it almost didn't feel like a YA book, it felt more like an adult book to me. Audrey is a breath of fresh air for YA female characters, there is no insta love and I just totally, ah, I adored it. Um, the beginning was a little bit slow and that's why I got four stars. Another four star read of the month was Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Now I read this for the Winter Biennial Bibliothon and it was my reader retelling. This is a retelling of Cinderella with sci-fi elements. In this book we follow 16 year old Cinder who is a cyborg. Um, it's set in New Beijing and she ends up fixing something for the prince and she has an evil stepmom and two stepsisters and you know what? It was pretty good. I really did enjoy it. Um, it had a little bit of info dumping for me, so that's why I only gave it four. But other than that, I really enjoyed Cinder. I enjoyed Prince Kai. And you know what? I'm super excited to continue on with this series. I'm so sad that I didn't read this book earlier. And this next book is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Maas. Um, this is the prequel, um, Throne of Glass, a novella bind up, and I did a full out review for it, so I will link it down below if you guys want to check it out. This has five stories all about Selena pre Throne of Glass time. I gave it 4.3 out of 5 stars. What I did with this one is I actually um, gave each story a rating out of 5 stars and I tallied it up and that's what the rating came to be. I absolutely love this. I think I like this better than all of the Throne of Glass books I read so far, which is only the first two. And it was just, oh, Sam and Selena. Yeah. Um, so if you guys want to know more of my thoughts and feelings though, definitely check out that review. My last two books are both five star reads and the first one is We Should All Be Feminists. Oh my god. Okay, so I read this for Diversathon. This is just a 40 page blurb um, about a TED talk that the author did and it was so good, it was so intelligent, it was so insightful. I even like tabbed it up because I loved some of the quotes in this book and I just, oh. I think I might read this like once a month just to kind of empower me a little bit. But yeah, I highly recommend you guys go and read this, men and women. All right, and the last book on this wrap up, my favorite book of the month is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I read this for Diversathon. I gave it five stars. It was truly amazing. This book follows an American Chinese family and they have found their eldest daughter dead in the lake. And it just like kind of follows how the family all deals with her death. And it goes back to like when the mom and dad met and when the mom and dad were both kids. And oh, you just get how each family member feels about this death and it flows together so beautifully like you'll be reading it about how the dad feels and then all of a sudden you're reading about how the brother feels and it's not like a rough jump it's like beautiful it's it was written amazing um this book touches on sexism racism feminism family morals everything it just really makes you wonder about where your morals lie it just it was very insightful for me and i loved it so much I could babble on about it forever. Um, I'm going to be doing a full out review for this book, so make sure to stay tuned for that and make sure you go read this book. Like, head over to your library, pick it up, and then devour it in a day because it was just uh, so good. And then I have somebody else to fangirl over it about. All right, guys, and that is all I have for you for my January wrap up. I hope this video was not too long. Nine book wrap up? Holy crap. Anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Oh, 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 oh,